What's up? Alec here at Soulful Guitar Lessons. I want you to grab your guitar and I'm going to show you a couple hammer-ons and pull-offs to make your playing more soulful. In lesson one of this series, we talked about a couple chords, three chords that could make your playing more soulful. And in that example, I was playing with some hammer-ons and pull-offs. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to incorporate those hammer-ons and pull-offs, give you a couple examples, and then give you some things to practice at the end of this so that you can really, really dive in, get it integrated into your playing, and really come out with that soulful, soulful sound. All right, here we go. All right, so in lesson one, we were talking about playing three chords more soulfully. And let's just do a little quick recap of that. So we have this shape. <laughs> which is a D, we have this shape, B minor. We have a G major. And that's it, and then in the progression we were playing something like this. All right. Now I want to take your playing from this and then I want to add some hammer-ons and pull-offs so it's gonna sound or look something like this right so we're gonna add like what am I doing here why and why do these hammer-ons and pull-offs sound soulful? And we can go over that in a couple upcoming lessons. But for now, just know that it's part of the history of soul guitar playing all the way back to the 60s and 70s and Motown and Earth, Wind and & Fire, Jackson 5, that type of thing, all right? So yeah, I'm gonna show you, and let's, do, let's, let's start with the first chord, all right? Let's start with this first chord. All right, so we have our pinky nine and our first finger barring the seventh fret. All right, and we're gonna use our ring finger here to hammer on the D string. All right, so it's gonna sound like this. The, the G string is gonna also ring at the same time. And then we're going to hammer on the A string. So seven to nine. Right. And let me do that slow for you again. Once again. All right. And we're going to speed it up eventually. So if we were in time, like one, two, three. Or it could sound like. Right? One, two, three. And so it basically gives your playing some motion rather than just strumming this. You, know, you, could, you can add some motion. It gives the listener some excitement and stuff to look forward to. You know, so it's kind of a little bit subconscious and subliminal. All right, let's move on to this B minor playing. And kind of like a, some of this, some of these shapes, you can even hear in other styles of music, you know, like Red Hot Chili Peppers. Uh, they'll use these shapes as well. Or Jimi Hendrix, who is a little more like rock and blues, um, but his band of gypsies playing. You know, he's playing some of these shapes as well. So it's not just limited to soul. Um, and I remember when I was in eighth grade and I was watching videos of Jimi Hendrix. Um, and I remember seeing his thumb come up over this, uh, come up over this neck. And I was like, what is that about? That must be something, you know, like I just, I visually saw him do that. And I didn't know why. And I started copying him and I realized uh, through this, you can kind of get the you can get the bass note instead of playing your bar chord like this, right? You can get um, the bass note covered with your thumb, which frees up some other digits and gives you that hammer on and pull off sound. 
And that was all just like me watching someone, uh, you know, like watching these old videos of him at Woodstock and, you know, all the other Monterey Jazz Fest, Monterey Jazz Fest and that kind of thing. And I really had an aha moment. So, you know, it's kind of a cool little trick I adopted from <laughs> from Jimmy. And then I realized, wow, like other soul guitar players do this as well. Um, but anyways, let's let, we can move on to this B minor shape. So we're going to use uh, thumb, ring, first finger. So instead of just strumming like that, we're going to use our pinky. And I'm going to try to, and it's going to sound like this. finger here on the D string ninth fret. So it's going to sound like this. Oops. We're going to land with our pinky. My apologies. Not, yeah. So it's going to be a little bit faster. Um, that's what it's going to sound like. But let's slow it down. First two shapes, let's review it. One, two, three. All right, slower. One, two, three. All right, now we have our final shape. Let's move on to this G chord, right? And I'm gonna play it kind of slow for you. Again, we're going to be using our pinky here, hammering on on the B string, fifth fret, and it sounds like this. Slower. Okay. So in context, we're going to have our chord. If you're struggling to get this, don't worry. It takes time. You know, the the first time you pick it up, pick up the guitar, it's this this kind of shape might be challenging. My hands are kind of small, so don't use like small hands or small fingers or whatever it is as an excuse. Uh, you know, playing guitar and playing music in general, uh, it's all about what's in here. So don't let any physical limitations uh, be a barrier to entry. Just keep at it, you know. But anyways, here here we have our final shape. So it's like, in context, we're going to start with this first chord. One, two, you can play along with me. One, two, three. Here's another thing we could do. We can add our pinky on the high E string fifth fret. It's a fun little chord. So let's try it with our pinky now. One, two, three. Right? So that's our example. Try playing along one more time. One, two, three. Right? So I took this chord progression from an old impression song, People Get Ready. Uh, it's probably more familiar to young people, uh, or maybe younger, you know, 30s, and uh, from the John Mayer song, Waiting on the World to Change. Similar progression. It's nothing new. It's also a Thomas Rhett song. Anyways, I want you to take these shapes and make it your own. So I want you to take my chord progression here that I showed you, and I want you to practice along, you know, get the shapes under your fingers, but then I want you to experiment 
with your own hammer-ons, your own pull-offs, and see if you can come up with anything unique to your own style, your own playing. And yeah, I would love to hear what you come up with, you know, comment below and let me know. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.